Hello, if you would like to see everything you need to know about a Maltese and its show coat, maintaining between the coat and keeping a healthy long coat in a Maltese, this is your video. This is Kitty for Kitty Talks Dogs. And today we have with us a wonderful Maltese. His name is Sonny. His real name is Diamond Jiminy Shining Star. And he's bred by the kennel Dimari Petro. Sonny has won many titles. He has in junior won Belgium champion and Alpen champion. And after his junior, he has won Dutch, German and European winner. Sonny was born in June 2018 and he has five fellow Maltese at home to play with, except his human parents. He likes to play, go walking, and he really lives in the house. If the breeder has puppies, it happens in the living room and it's a real family thing. And the whole family enjoys the puppies and the work around all the puppies. I'm very thankful for Mark and Petra for letting me groom Sonny and I will groom Sonny the best I can with my 43 years of knowledge I have. But I never claim I'm the best groomer and I know it all. I just try to give you as much information as I can with my knowledge. Sonny has been bred in Russia and has been imported by Petra and Mark to do dog shows over here in Europe. The Maltese is a family dog. It's a small dog which is very good to hold in small places like apartments and small houses and is a very affectionate dog for the family and for children. It does contain grooming, especially if you want to keep the hair long. The Maltese has a long silky coat and normally has no undercoat. Sunny does have a little bit undercoat about that long. The undercoat is woolly and it also makes the hair like have a bit of volume so Sonny's coat is not like falling down very silky because it has a lot of undercoat under the long silky coat. The long coat from the Maltese needs quite a lot of maintenance. It needs to be washed at least one time a week and we need to use nurturing conditioners and oils and if you want a perfect long coat, the coat needs to be wrapped. And I will tell you why. Just like when you hang out your washing outside in the summer or inside in the winter when it's very hot inside, the washing dries, well, the hair dries as well. And if it dries too much, it will break. Every single hair needs to be nurtured and protected from breaking especially from drying out. You need to use the right kind of brushes as well and the right kind of technique. If you use a brush and you go very fast like this, it's very bad for the coat. If you use the brush and you are brushing and you are like turning all the time the brush like this, you will grab the hair like this, you will catch the hair and this is very bad for the coat. If you go very fast you will create static and hair with static can break. The pin brush you're using is extremely important. It needs to be flexible like this. So when you are brushing with this brush and there's one hair stuck the pin will be flexible and you won't break the coat. Many breeders in the Maltese dogs use a nylon and bristol and this is also perfectly okay also if the nylon and bristol is nice and flexible. This is a slicker brush. This has very much pins which are very narrow and they have like a, an angulation. This is not okay. In the worst case, it's okay to groom here or between the back legs, but it's not okay to groom the whole dog because these pins are very narrow and they have the angulation and they will damage the coat. I have to tell you a story. 
When I was a young girl, 16 years old, I was taught by Mr. van der Navond, which was a poodle breeder. And at first, when I arrived there, I had to learn only brushing. And he gave me the pin brush. And he gave me dogs that weren't looked at properly, maybe for a week or 10 days. And I had to brush the whole dog out with a pin brush. And I couldn't use any comb or any other brush. It took hours, but I carefully had to start at the points and then go deeper and deeper and deeper. And I had to show my brush to the breeder afterwards, and I had to take out the hair out of the brush to show him how little hair I had in my brush. That way he saw how much hair was damaged. Here you see Sonny arriving with Petra, his owner, and you see all his wraps. Because Sonny is no more doing dog shows, his hair isn't maintained like every week. Sometimes it's a little longer and Sonny doesn't have the perfect dog show coat anymore. If you see any of the products I'm using, there's a link down below. You can just click on it and you see a full list of all the used products. Let's do some prep work. And today we are just going to get out the wraps very slowly and carefully. I really like to use that small little band scissor because every hair is important and I don't like to like take out the bands because sometimes the hair is like wrapped around the bands and you might damage a few hairs. So if every hair is important, just cut the band with the band scissor. Here you see me just unwrapping the wraps. These are the paper wraps and the advantage of using the paper wraps is if it's humid or if the dog's hair accidentally gets wet, the hair has the possibility of drying again. You can also use plastic wraps, but if you use the plastic wraps, you have the danger that the hair, if it gets humid or wet, cannot dry inside the wraps. Here you see me cutting the band in the hair at the top knot. When I have to cut with the band scissor close to the hair where there's no paper in between, I always gently lift up one of the bands with my finger and then with the scissor band, I cut the band off without cutting any hairs. And now I'm just going to take one band back in the hair just to protect, because if I wouldn't do that, I would have the risk that the hair would go between the eyes and maybe in Sonny's mouth, and we don't want to have that happening. There's no much brushing in advance because the hair is now dirty and a little stiff and dry and we don't really want to brush a lot to not damage the hair. I like to investigate the hair. So here you see me putting a gray paper behind a, a bit of hair. And at the top, you see that Sonny has thick hair. You also see some undercoat in there. But more importantly, you see that at the bottom of the hair, it's quite thin. So that means it's very uh, fragile. And over the time, uh, because Sonny is not being showing anymore and Sonny is not being washed frequently every week, uh, he has some damage at the points. If you feel the need for brushing before the bath or if the dog has some mats and you would like to get the mats out before the bath and you have a very long haired Maltese, please just start at the bottom of the tips and just work first at the bottom and you first brush gently out the tips of the hair and then gradually you can go higher and higher and then you can brush the full coat. Now let's do some ear care. Here you see the products I'm going to use. I'm going to use the ear powder, the ear care, the ear wipes, the tweezers, and the big Q-tips. 
First of all, I like to use the powder very much and like just let it fall on the ear, even on the scalp. I do this by plucking out the hair, but as you can see, I pluck it not long. I take it and then I pluck in a quick movement. Then I use the tweezers here. And as you can see, the tweezers are very good and you can take all the hair from inside and deep inside the ear. And now the other side. Again, you see me here in a quick movement, taking all the hair from the scalp. Sometimes I do like this, so I have a few hairs standing up and then my second movement is pulling them out. That's because I don't want to pull too much hair at once because some dogs are very sensitive. The more sensitive the dogs are, the less hair you pull at once. Here you see me going quite deep with the tweezers because some hairs come from really deep inside the ear canal and you can't like grab them with your fingers. Next step, getting out all the wax and all the rest of the dirt from the ear. So this we do with the ear care. You can just dribble in until the ear is full of ear care. Give it a small massage, wait like for a half a minute, and then all the wax and all the dirt is loose and dissolved. And then next step, the big Q-tips. Just take the Q-tips and go gently inside the ears with the Q-tips. Don't be afraid to go too deep because the dog's ear canal is actually going down and up again. And the part which is dangerous is going up. So don't be afraid of going too deep. Then the last step, cleaning the ear scalp with the ear wipes. Sometimes the ear scalp can be really greasy and fatty and have like a brown look and it's very nice to take this away with the wet wipes. The last step for the ears, don't forget each time you use your tweezers to clean them. You can clean them with whatever you like as long as they are cleaned. I like to use the ear care for cleaning. It's uh, hygienic. I, I like to use a little brush here. You see me using a kind of a toothbrush because I want everything to be squeaky clean. Next step, clipping the nails. If I have an accident by cutting too short and the dog's nail is bleeding, I always wanna have the right products with me. So here you see paper for if I have an accident, the nail clipper, the stop bleed and the nail file. Here you see me clipping the nails. It's very easy because the nails are white color and you see the quick and you see where not to cut. So I'm going as close as possible to the quick without being in danger of cutting too much. Also, don't forget the side nail. And here you see me the second foot, just clipping away. And the more nails I clip with the nail clipper, the less work I will have afterwards to file. Here you see me filing, and as you can see with the file, you can go really short and just above the quick. No more sharp edges, no more scratches, nice, clean and round nails. Now let's do some clipping. There's not a lot of clipping work to do. It's actually only the pads. And today I'm going to use the Starlet for the pads and for the tummy, I'm going to use the Experto. The Starlet is ideal for little feet, under the feet, the pads, the ears, but I wouldn't use it on faces because it would clip the hair too short and on the faces and other parts of the body, the hair needs to be longer. The Starlet has three speeds and I'm using the high speed because I don't really want to push the clipper very much. I just want to like fly over the pads and automatically when the clipper is working hard on speed three, it will clip all the hairs without having to go very much in the clipper. And even here, I like to like fly away a bit like this. So all the hair hairs are also 
clipped. Here you see me just going over the pads with the starlet. Gently, I'm like scooping inside the pads. And now I'm gently holding like the two outer fingers like, like this. So if you see here, and then I can scoop out all which is in between the little pads. It's nice to have in your hands like a light clipper like this. And you know, you can, you don't have to hold it with your whole hand. You can hold it like with the tip of your fingers. And if you use tools with the tip of your fingers, you have a lot of feeling. So you don't risk you're going to be too hard when you are going between the pads. And as you can see, Sonny has no problem at all by letting us go over his pads. That's because Sonny's never been hurt while we are doing this. And the machine is also having not much vibrations. Here you see me using the medium blade with the Experto. The medium blade goes to nine, and this is quite long for the tummy. And if you clip the tummy quite long, you have no risk of irritation afterwards. I'm shaving quite high up at the tummy because Sonny is no more going to the dog shows. And as you can see, he has a matted tummy. And we don't really do that when you have a dog which is active going to the dog shows. And here you see me clipping a little around the anus with the Experto. And now Sonny is ready to do some bathing. First of all, we are going to use the Timaha clay shampoo. The name says it, the Timaha is based on clay. And this is very good for purifying the skin and the coat. Then we are going to use the Roman shampoo for its nurturing uh, ingredients. And then we are going to use the moisture mask also for all the oils and nurturing the coat. For a Maltese, we would like to use like a half a liter. So that's uh, one and a half tablespoon of shampoo with a half a liter of water. And here you see me just mixing and I'm using warm water. So the Timaha with all its nurturing oils and clay is very much dissolving in the warm water. If you would use too cold water, it would have a problem dissolving. So it's better to use nice and warm water. Here you see me preparing the Roman shampoo with the universal pump, where I first need to cut out a piece of the universal pump. And I like to use the nail clipper for that. And I like to clip it just as it has the correct size of the bottle. And then we are ready to go. The Showtech Universal Pump comes with a lot of attachments, so it can be used with all our shampoo bottles, not only from Showtech, but also from other brands. Here you see me preparing the Romance shampoo, which is concentrated 20 to 1. So I will first put my water in the bottle, and I will follow the 20 sign line with water and then I will add the Roman shampoo until the fill line. I always use warm water so the shampoo can dilute easily. And now we are wetting Sunny. As you can see, Sunny is very used to being in the bath and has absolutely no problem with the water. I like to hold the nose a little bit upwards and like to go with the shower around the nose so I don't get any splashes or water inside the nose. And now I am using the Timaha shampoo and applying the Timaha shampoo with the foaming sponge and the foaming sponge makes sure I immediately have a layer of foam. I don't use the foaming sponge for washing, uh, only for applying. And I like it very much because it's like a plastic net. And when you put shampoo in there, immediately you create the lather. As you can see here, I was washing the neck and all over the body. And I haven't really touched the head yet because I like to wash the head at last. I also I think it's very important to wash between the toes and the pads. And then the last thing I do is washing the head. Here you see me applying shampoo on the head 
and I will wash the head, the nose, around the eyes, the ears, and first of all, I will now wash and then immediately rinse off the head. I'm always afraid of the shampoo going into the eyes, and must I not see that the dog has shampoo in the eyes, at least then you rinse it away straight away. Actually, you see, I'm not really making circular movements, and that's because we have here in the bath a, lo a very co long coat, and if you make circular movements, you might have mats afterwards, or you might tangle the coat, and that's not good for the drying. It You can damage the coat by doing that, so I like to use squeezing movements. You can move upside, up and down, but no circular movements. Now it's important to do some rinsing. Rinsing is there for taking all the fatty and the dirt and all the things away. So it's very important between the two washings you rinse very well. It's also very important you wash every time twice because the first time is like the most dirt is going. The second wash is more for perfecting and we can use other shampoos like for maintenance uh, for volume, but in Sunny's case for nurturing. Here you see me applying the Romance shampoo. The Romance shampoo contains moisturizing conditioners that nurtures the coat and also revitalize the coat. Here as well, you see me squeezing the coat, washing between the toes, but not really making circular movements. Just keep on adding the shampoo, and the last, but not the least, is the washing of the head. Also between the eyes, the nose. Sonny is such a good dog, just letting us wash. You can see Sonny is very used to the bath. And if you have a puppy, it's not always like this, but just remember, if you do it from very young, the dogs are used to this and they will just think it's normal to go weekly in the bath. It's important to do it as quickly or as early as possible so they grow up with the fact that they are in the bath every week. Here again you saw me lifting up the nose and going around the nose with the shower head so there's no water going over the nose. You have to be careful not to have any water in the nose because directly it goes into the windpipe and that's just very frightening and it's also very unpleasant for the dog. And here you see me preparing the moisture mask. I just took with the spoon a little moisture mask in my hands and I just rub my hands. I don't really like to put my fingers into the moisture mask products. I like to use the spoon for hygienic reasons also, sometimes you are rubbing the dog and then you put your fingers into the moisture mask and the moisture mask is full of hair. That's why it's better to use a spoon than your fingers. Uh, you see me like slowly massaging the coat. Every time I do that, I am feeling like if there's enough conditioner on there and if there's enough conditioner on there, on there you will feel like a very soft, creamy coat texture. And that's exactly what we need. And that's when we have put enough conditioner in the coat. Here you see me putting the dry dude on Sunny. This is just to make Sunny stay warm and to have the effect of all the conditioners in the moisture mask, uh, like working into the coat. And Sunny will slowly, like the conditioners will penetrate through the coat and uh, not only the coat, but also the skin. And this is like a very important part. So let the conditioners and the active oils do their work on Sunny's coat. So now let's do some rinsing. It's important you use nice warm water, not too warm, but you know, just like a good temperature water. And I'm also saying this because with the warm water, the oils and the conditioner and the revitalizing oils are going to not, not, not be nicely dissolved in the warm water and rinse well. I like all the conditioners to be rinsed out. Sometimes between shows you can leave some conditioners in, but it's also a little personal and I personally like all the conditioners to be rinsed out 
And if you need moisturings, more moisturing between when the coat is dry, I prefer to use oil. So it's one of the reasons I always rinse out nicely. And now let's do some drying. Here you see me using the moisture magnet and that's just a very good tool to get out the most water from the coat and it's very easy in use. You just use it as a towel. When it's just full of water and feeling a bit heavy, you can just wring it out and carry on drying. Here you see me wringing out the moisture magnet and the moisture magnet can be used again and again and again. When you are doing lots of dogs in a day, I always recommend you rinse your moisture magnet in a disinfectant so you don't carry bacteria around from one dog to another dog. And here you see a uh, half dry sunny. Now it's time for toweling. Also here we have to be a little careful not to overdo it with the towel. So not too much round movements for not matting or tangling the hair. And a very simple way to know when, it's, when you are ready to start drying is you dry with your towel and then you look at your hand on the light and if it's very shiny, it means the coat is still very, very, very wet. And when it's just normal and not shiny, it's because the coat is towel dry, I call it. And that's a good thing. Here you see me rubbing on the feet and the leg. And when I show my hand, the lights are like shining on my hand. And you see the shiny water laying on my hand. That means that the dog is not towel dry yet. Here you see me brushing and I'm starting nicely at the points. I'm holding the points with my other hand. And here you see me putting a band in the hair. It's quite important that the hair is protected. And here you see me showing what not to do. So hold the brush quite steady. If you brush, hold it, don't turn it and pull it as I can, I am showing you here. It's very important not to do that because if you do that, you will hurt, first of all, the hair, but also the skin because you are like rolling the brush and putting all the pins on the skin. And that's not a good technique. It's also not good for the brush, not for the hair. So just keep your brush steady and in the same position, flat. And it's also important not to go too fast because the warm air and the metal pins, and if you go very fast, you will make the hair go static. It's also very important, the hot air is not too hot. Warm is sufficient for the coat. Here you can see how less hair I have in my brush. And now we need some time. Just carry on brushing steady and let the brush and the warm air do its job. It's important we brush everywhere because if we wouldn't do that, the hair would go too curly or too wavy and just steady part per part. As you can see where the dryer is like facing, you have like the hair going up and that's like creating a star. So I always say to the people, that's your direction and that's exactly where you need to dry. And that's where you need to have the brush where the hair goes open. You need to brush there, like to pull steady, slowly, but there you need to straighten the hair and the hair needs to go from damp to, to dry with the dryer on that spot and the comb, the brush on that spot. And there you need to gradually like pull the hair so it dries and it's straight. When you have a young puppy, I recommend you teach them to lie down on their side and even put a towel on the table so you can teach them when you want to do the tummy, they can just lie flat and open the legs like this. It's very easy. 
But if you have a grown up dog, it's too late to teach them that because then they will think it's something not normal. If they have brought up with it, it's very easy. So here Sunny is not used to lying down to be groomed. Sunny is used to standing up. And the only way then we can do the tummy is by lifting up the front legs or the back legs. But also here you see uh, Sunny has a little bit mats under there and I'm still using the pin brush for getting out all the mats. Here you see how much hair is in my brush. We are more than halfway through the grooming and as you can see here in my pin brush, I don't have a lot of hair. Unexpectedly, Sunny had to have a toilet stop, but we have the perfect solution over here. As you can see here, the whole hair is black here and there, and let me show you how to solve it. This is a product I always have with me when I go to the dog shows, and I absolutely love it. It's called the Showtech Dry Shampoo. It has a fantastic odor, but most importantly, it like absorbs all dirt and all liquid. As you can see here, I just let the powder fall on the black bits and I let the powder do its job. You can just put the powder on, even have it a little rub so it, you can rub it in the, in the black bits or in the dirty or in the wet bits and the powder is gonna absorb everything and the extra powder is just gonna fall off. And you're gonna stay with a perfectly clean coat again. And here you can see he also urinated a little bit on the long hair and here as well, it's just easy. Just put some powder on and brush it out and it's all squeaky clean again. And now let's just continue drying here you see the dryer is on the setting warm temperature and not hot temperature because it's really very important for the hair if we don't use too hot air. If we would use too hot air, we would risk, first of all, breakage. Second of all, we would have a static coat. It's not really advisable. Here you see me drying the tail. I've just cut out the band in his head and drying the beard now. It's very, very easy. Just let the dryer, the warm air do its job and just go slightly, gently over the hair with the brush. Let's do some scissoring. I like to use the curved on the feet. With the curved, it's easy to make the round feet. And even for the feathering, for the body, for the long hair, I also like to use the curved. I chose for the Yento Fanatic series, 19 centimeters or seven and a half inch today. Here are the two combs I'm going to use. I like the carbon needle comb and I also like the scissoring comb because the scissoring comb is like very fine and it has lots of pins very narrow to each other. Let's first uh, again protect the top knot and here you see me like making a V with the point and then let's first protect the hair from not going into the mouth and not going to in the eyes. Here you see me backcombing to get some volume and here you see me pulling the hair a bit and here you see now a little bubble because I really pulled a little. Also for making the line, for me it's very easy to go from the back to the front. I can't make a line the other way around but maybe that's also very personal, I don't know. But I usually take the tail and I make sure the dog is standing quite straight and I see the middle of the tail and then like I feel the bones in the back and I go with my needle comb from the back to the front and gradually, gently make the line. Here you see me using the Protect and Shine Serum. This is a very good serum, it will give shine, but most of all, here I have a little bit of the hair like standing up because Sunny has undercoat 
and while using the serum I can nicely smoothen the coat out and it will fall better and it will layer better and it's also going to look better. The trick with the serum is using not too much. Just put a little bit, one pump in your both hands and smooth it over the coat. You can also use this serum only on the tips or you can work in the coat where the coat is frizzy and it will get rid of the frizzy or the curls very quickly. A long time ago when I learned scissoring, unfortunately I had to learn with straight scissors so my first choice is always taking a straight scissor, but soon I realized and I switched over to the curved one. And here you see me lifting up all the hair from the front leg, nicely combing all the other hairs and just going over the feet. Here you see me scissoring around the feet. It's important you make the feet as round as possible and you are careful not to follow the feet too much because mini Maltese have feet like little triangles and if you follow the size of the feet sometimes you will end up having a triangle so be careful and keep it round. Here you see me working on the back legs. If you don't have a lot of experience just hold your scissor as flat as possible, as horizontal as possible and just make the circle around the feet. And now we are repeating on the back leg again. Comb and scissor and comb and scissor and comb again. To have a clean cut we need to go through the hair with the comb without getting stuck in the hair. So this is the most important here. So first combing and then scissoring and then repeating. And then it's also important we see the view from all sides. So you like have to stand in front of the dog and see a nice round. Then from the side, then from the back. And if all sides are nice rounded, then it's okay. And here we are going to scissor some of the feathering. Just comb all the feathering nice down and then follow the line of the dog. Again here you see all the hairs falling down or downward combed and this you need to repeat until you have a nice round. If you have a show dog it's better to keep the hair as long as possible but Sunny has been now finished going to the show so here we can go a little bit higher up. Now the other side just the same way. Here I'm using the pen brush and here again I'm just gonna go around all the hair and cut all hairs which are too long. Here again I'm like only using the pen brush brushing all the hairs downwards and then scissoring. And at the end here you see me using the comb and going around again with the scissors. I have just used the quick fix spray which is a lubricator and a dematter at once but it also lays the hair a bit down. We have the diluted quick fix spray but also the concentrate. The concentrate needs to be diluted 1 to 15, that's like one part of quick fix to 15 parts of water. If you use the quick fix spray for a scissoring spray, we advise you to go like one time quick fix spray and 30 times water, so it's well diluted. And that way you can like spray. We also don't recommend a real spray, we recommend you use the micro spray, that's like not like a spray, because if you spray the hair will get wet. If you use the micro spray it's like a mist, it's like just a little bit of a cloud that goes onto the hair and you can layer it, you can work with the hair, it's uh, lubricated, there's also no chance that there's going to be any static uh, around the hair but it won't get sticky uh, because this product is very good and it will make sure you can pass the combs and the brushes very well to be able to scissor. Here I am scissoring away all the hair which are still in the way when Sonny is lifting his tail. 
I prefer always to do that after the bath because I don't want to have not enough hair, but when you are finished bathing, you see which hairs are sticking out and then you can gently lift up the tail and get away the hair which are in the way. Here you see the products I'm going to use next, but there are so many, I'm just gonna explain as we go. Let's do the top knot first. I'm not a big specialist in top knots, but I will do my best. I like to like back comb. Uh, normally the sides and the front, you like, you, you like take a little piece and you don't back comb them. That will make sure that the front, you won't see any back combing and the front hair will hide away the back combing. Here I'm dividing the two parts because the Maltese normally has two little top knots. It's also not very good you take too much hair because then it will be too heavy. It is very important that the lines are very clean and that the lines between the two eyes are very correct. So here as well at the corner of the eye, it's like important that the hair is nice and that there's a nice clean line there. As you can see, Sonny is like behaving like a very nice prince and Sonny is relaxing on the comfy pillow. It's like wonderful to work. He's like very used to it and he says, just, just do what you want. It's like wonderful, his temperament. Here you see me putting on the white top knot bands in latex and I turn it around like three times. I'm not going too high and I'm not going against the skin. I'm making it quite loose. And then I'm like putting my, the top of my comb in and I'm pulling it a little towards the back. Here you see me opening the ponytail because I like to take a little piece from in the middle of the ponytail and either I take my comb and I push the band towards the skin or I just take my two fingers and I hold that little piece in the middle of the ponytail of the hair and I push the band against towards the skin and that makes the bubble come out more. And now the trick is to do the same thing exactly on the other side. Here you see me holding up and just trying to decide if it's okay, if it's gonna be nice. So I hold the hair and I twist the hair around so I see the bubble and I see if it's correct. And here again, you see me putting the band in and I'm turning it around three times. And here you see the two bands. And now I'm just going to put in the paper. We are using the paper, first of all, to protect the coat, but also to make the nice two ponytails, like dots, stand upwards. Turn the paper around and then turn the ponytail inwards. And then you can put the elastic on. And now we need to like back comb the whole head so you don't see like here the bubble and then everything flat. So we back comb a bit to give the head a bit of volume. Here you see me using some Evolution hairspray. It's just because I'm back combing and I want to hold the volume. Here you see me back combing layer per layer and also closer to the eyes the sides, and now we are going to like brush through only the tips. We are not going to brush through all the, all the, the back combing, just to make sure we are keeping the volume. Here you see me also combing the moustache, because here it's no use. You have like a nice top knot, a nice voluminous head, and then a moustache that's like flat, going flat down. Also, you need some rounding here, and then you will see the nice white head and the black eyes coming out. Also, next to the eyes, don't forget to do some back combing to make the hairs voluminous. And now like the top of the hair, you can just comb. Now this is a very difficult part to put in the bows. 
So I'm just putting the bow from the front to the back, turning around and putting the elastic one time around. Here you see me using the hair straighteners. It's very easy. Just take a little bit of hairs at the time and go from the top to the bottom and you slide the straighteners through the coat. Don't stop, just go slowly and steadily through the hair. Take little pieces at one time and layer the coat so you know which piece is finished and which piece you still need to do. I'm not going to do the whole coat, but I know there was going to be questions. So here I'm just showing you a little part of the coat. At the back here, you see already a nice difference between before and after the straighteners. You see that the hair is like less curly, less frizzy, and it falls better down. Also because Sunny for the moment has a, a little bit much undercoat here, and also because the undercoat is a bit frizzy, it's a big difference. You just simply see a more natural coat after you've passed the straighteners. Sunny is standing like a statue and just letting us groom all we like. It's just like Sunny is saying, just do what you have to do. I'm okay with everything. <laughs> Here it's just repeating, just sliding through the straighteners, taking another layer, bits at the time. Here you see me brushing Sunny and you can see how nice layered the coat is and how nice it falls after the straighteners are done. And here you see me doing some clipping work. We normally like to get here at the tip of the lip a little bit a hair out so it's nicely and neat and also a little bit of the chin. Here you see a finished Sunny and here you see the before and the after pictures. Now we have washed and styled, but there's one very important step to do yet, and that's the wrapping. So we will moisture the coat with coat oil and wrap it up because every hair is important in Sunny's case, and Sunny's hair needs to be protected as much as possible with the wraps. We have been using a lot of products, but there's more to come. Especially now we are going to use the pillow, the wrapping paper, the wrapping bands and the moisturizing oil. Let's gently get rid of the bows. And here you see me cutting out the bands again and taking out the paper. And now let's protect the coat with the wraps. Let's take out all the product from the back combing and now let's just put a little bit oil on our fingers and just rub it into the coat. Also we are using not the wrapping bands but the top knot bands. And that's actually very interesting to say because many people would use the wrapping bands for the top knot and I think that's a bit aggressive and a bit dangerous for breaking the hair. So actually it's better to use the really fine latex bands. And I'll tell you why. If a dog has the, the hard, like the, the rubber bands for wrapping, it's like special for the paper, but when that gets in contact with the hair, it can rub against the hair and you have more breakage. If you are using the very little fine latex bands, which are specially for top knots and to get in contact with the hair, if the dog scratches or goes rubbing on the carpets, the latex bands will break. And that's a good thing because then the hair will break, but the latex bands will break. And here on the second side also, we are putting some oil, specially on the points. 
We don't have to use a lot of oil, just a bit. And then let us put the top knot band in. And this time we are making it quite uh, close to the skin with not much spacing around. And now we are like taking the next layer and we are just going to attach the first layer to the second layer. And also this part is very personal. Sometimes you can make one side and you can just take one and the next and the next and the next. But in Sunny's case, I've just decided to take again, oh, as well, two parts. So I'm making two pony's tails instead of one. Here now for the third time, I'm going like one more backwards. And every time I do this, I try not to take any hairs from the left to the right. I like the clean lines. So there's no hair, like uh, one hair, which is too tight. I make it as loose as possible. And I'm very careful not to take any other hairs except the hairs I need to take. The hair bands can stay up to two, maximum three days. And after three days, they, re they need to be redone because if not, you risk that the, the hair around is going to get tangled and you also risk again that you have damaged hair. Here I'm taking all the hair from the moustache and here as well, I'm just going to use a small piece of paper, wrap it around and just put the band around the paper. And this will protect the hair and it also this will also protect the hair from going into the mouth and the hair from going into the food or the water bowl. And here is the second band. Here you see me using the oil again and again wrapping the paper around the moustache. The comfy container is like very fun to use. It's very squeezy, it's soft and you can just squeeze and you can just like pull, pour and there's a few bands coming out. And if you don't push them, you can do that and they will not fall out. So you can also put them in your grooming box without having bands everywhere. In our market, we use it for little stripping stones, for finger condoms, for cotton bands, for wrapping bands, for top knot bands. But if you must, you can also use it for screws, even for buttons or bows or nails, or you can use it for whatever you like. And now let's do the ears. So first separate all the hairs from the ears. You can also wrap around, uh, wrap around the ears. I've just measured how long it needs to be and I've decided to just cut one wrap in two pieces. Just separate all the hairs from the neck and from the other parts of the body. Just take the hair from the ear. Don't forget to put the oil on and just wrap the wrapping paper all around the ear. You can fold the wrapping paper over and fold it again at the bottom and fold it again at the behind and then wrap it and wrap it again. One thing which you need to be very, very careful is when you put the rubber band on the wrapping paper, you need to check yourselves that the rubber band is never on the ear itself. If you put a rubber band around the ear itself, the ear will simply die and fall off. So you have to be very careful and you always have to check yourselves. And now we are just taking all the hair from the cheek. The next layer. Here you see me wrapping the wrapping paper. I'm like going from the behind the hair and then I'm folding it one time to the left. I'm folding it one time to the right and again under and then I'm just folding and folding again. And now it's ready to put the rubber band in. And now again the other cheek. 
the hair on the head. And this is just putting on the paper again, folding the paper around the hair, folding the paper up, putting the band in, and the hair is protected. Also here we advise that you put the wrappers in and every two, maximum three days, you take them out and you put again oil on the coat and you rewrap. Here you see me using the oil again and here one more combing, wrapping the paper also at the back and folding, folding again the rubber band if I find it. Yes. One, two, three. And now we are checking. Okay, here you can see the comb going through the hair. So the rubber band can absolutely not be on top of the skin. So we are safe. And now we have to continue the whole coat and doing piece per piece. Here you see me starting at the top. Now, because the hair is very long there, I need the full length of the wrapping paper. And here we wrap one time to the left. We fold. We wrap the paper to the right. And then we fold the wrapping paper one time, two times, three times the band and the next part. We just need to continue and brushing and combing and wrapping all around the dog. Repeat, repeat, repeat. And to make the process go quicker, let's make a Gabriel trick. And voila! And here you see a totally finished Sunny. All the hairs are protected and well packed in the wraps so they can't break. For the eyes, we will use the No More Tear Stains because Sunny has a little bit stains and the No More Tear Stains is ideal. The only thing is you have to use it every day in and around the eyes. As you can see here, you can just dribble a few drops into the eyes and then clean with a tissue around the eyes. It's not necessary today, but normally a good trick is the eye comb. The eye comb is an ideal little comb to get all the crusts out of the comb because the teeth are so narrow to each other. It's actually also possible you use it as a flea comb, but to get all the crusts out of the eyes, this is ideal. And now for finishing, let's put some stain away on Sunny's coat around the eyes. Tear stains are a little acidic and the stain away powder, which is based on clay, will neutralize the acidic and will protect the hair from getting brown. The stain away, you also need to just dab on with a brush. As you can see here, you can do it every day for as long as you want. You can just let it dry. And normally, if it's very wet, the powder will absorb all the liquid and dry out again. The next day you can just add more powder on and after a few days you need to wash and start over all again. Now you have a totally finished Sunny. Thank you very much for watching this video and if you like anything I have been using from products there's a link down below and if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask them down below in the comment section Keep on grooming with passion and see you next time.